Good morning, church. How's everybody? All right. Glad to hear it. Hey, just curious, do we have any folks visiting that might be out of town on vacation? All right. Thanks for coming and worshiping with us this morning. We're so honored to have you here. Let's all stand and worship the Lord in song. Uh-oh. We're waiting on Chip. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain your love will surely come find us like brazen wildfires singing your
If you could take a moment. Oh, thank you. If you could take a moment and greet somebody near you and pass the peace, tell them happy Advent. children want to come be with me this morning? You do? All right. Come on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we have started the Advent season. Do you know what Advent means? It means coming. And who is coming? Who, who are we waiting for? Who do you think? Jesus, Jesus right. Exactly. <clears throat> um, so we're thinking about how Jesus came a long time ago, born of, of a virgin, born in a cattle trough. We call it a manger in Bethlehem. But we're also looking forward to Jesus coming again his second advent or his second coming. And one of the things that I'm going to talk to um, the folks about today is making a Christmas list for your family and friends. Kind of a wish list and really what it is is a prayer list. And so this is a good time to kind of continue what we talked about before about Thanksgiving, about thinking about the things that we are thankful for that God has put these people in our lives and what are we grateful for about them. So think about some things that you're thankful for um, for your parents, if you have any brothers or sisters, if you have cousins or aunts or uncles or grandparents or friends at school. Think about those people and what are the things that you wish for them? What are the things that you hope for them? Those are the things that make a really nice Christmas list, our prayer list for our friends and our family. All right, so let's pray. God, as we think about Jesus coming so long ago and as we look forward to that time when he will come again, we give you thanks today. And today we also thank you for our family, our friends, our church family. And we want the very best for each of them. So would you bless them and help them and strengthen them and encourage them? 
we pray all your good blessings for each of the good people that you have put in our lives. And we thank you for them this day. In Jesus' name, and we say, amen. That's what we say. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go skip it. All right. No, nah, skipping it. Pastor Chris obviously has to upgrade his candy here. It's <laughs> not as enticing as it should be. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> during the season of Advent, each Sunday, we light uh, candles to commemorate and to recognize and observe the passing Sundays in the season of Advent, Advent being the four Sundays leading up to Christmas. And so um, the Stewart family is going to light our first candle this morning. The, the Sundays of Advent are a time of pre preparation for the coming of Christ and the celebration of his birth. On the first Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of hope for the coming of Christ into our, into our lives, brings hope. And so if the Stewart family would come and light our first candle for us. Thank you. And before we receive our offering this morning, we have a short mission video on United Methodist Student Day. This is a day uh, that we receive a special offering every year. So let's give our attention to this. Making sure that our young members have the tools to impact their communities and the world is a promise that the United Methodist Church is keeping. Each year, young people who have shown leadership within their own congregations have the opportunity to do remarkable work at colleges and universities across the nation. United Methodist Student Day offering makes a statement, and that statement is, the church is fully investing in its future. The offering provides scholarships and low-interest student loans to United Methodist students to assist with their education. The church reaps the benefits when students graduate and go into a number of fields that enhance the world and the mission of the church. On United Methodist Student Day, you help support the young men and women who are contributing to the leadership and transformation of the world. Know that your giving and your generosity make a difference to many students. So trusting uh, in the sure promises of Christ and grateful for the Spirit-sustaining power, let us bring our tithes, our offerings, and ourselves as we worship God.
If you happen to be sitting on an aisle, if you will uh, make sure that you've registered your attendance, you may have already done that and pass it down your row so everyone has an opportunity to do that. Uh, we would be grateful if you would help us with that chore. And um, also a couple of things uh, in your bulletin. If you would like to give a poinsettia either in honor or in memory of someone, you may do that and or you may also give a donation toward uh, missions, which will go this year to support the work of Dare Challenge. We're asking that uh, you uh, make your check payable to Duck United Methodist Church, and the deadline for orders is Sunday, the uh, 15th of December, and uh, you see the instructions there for picking up uh, your flowers. Also in your bulletin, there is uh, a list of all the different uh, symbols for the Chrismons. So Chrismon is the is the uh, the decorations that adorns our tree. It's short for Christ monograms, and they all have uh, all the symbols have different meaning and purpose. And uh, this little sheet will let you know what that's all about. So thank you for those who put that together for us. Are there any prayer concerns? First, we'll start over on this side. Any prayer concerns over here? Yes. Okay, thank you. Richie, okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Neil and David, thank you. All right, what about this side? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Janice, thank you. Yes. Okay, stepmom. Yes. Jessica, all right? Sharon Waller family. Thank you. 
All right, let's uh, go to the Lord together as we pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, the fact that we can always count on you. We thank you today for the love that you have for us, that you demonstrate to us. And as we celebrate this first Sunday of Advent, as we look forward to your coming again, help us to make ready for that coming. And Lord, we are grateful to be able to lift in prayer these that we have called aloud and those that we name in silence. We pray the very best for each. There are some that are grieving. There are some that are sick. There are those that are traveling. There are those that are troubled. And all of these and all of us need your help and your presence in our lives. So we pray that you would manifest that presence. Give your peace, your comfort, your healing, your grace. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. So the scripture this morning uh, comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. Listen for the word of God. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of God, of our God, because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. For as long as I can remember, I've heard people complain that Christmas is too commercial. Even in the movie A Miracle on 34th Street, which was filmed way more than 50 years ago now, one of the characters complains that most people are too caught up in the material aspect of the holiday. And it's probably always been that way. As long as Christmas has been celebrated, I'm sure there have been people warning us about the dangers of it becoming too commercial. Well, this year, we're going to try to get past all of that. Today, we're beginning a four-part four series, not a, poor, not a poor one, a four-part series, <laughs> I hope it's not poor, uh, called A Simple Christmas. And for the next four weeks, we're going to be looking at ways that we can make this a Christ-centered Christmas, one where we can grow closer to God and connect with our loved ones on a deeper level, one in which we can learn to avoid the craziness that often plagues our lives in December, and in which we can discover in the process what Christmas is really all about. Today we're going to talk specifically about connecting with our family and friends. If you want to get the most out of this Christmas, then forget for a while what you need to buy and what you need to do and spend some time focusing on the people that you will see during the holidays. The first step to celebrating a simple Christmas is to connect on a deeper level with the people that are in your life. Today, we look at the passage of Scripture that offers some suggestions on how to do that. It's from a letter written by Paul to the church in Thessalonica. They were a group of believers whom Paul loved very much, and in this letter, he pours out his heart to them. The same way that he shares his heart with that group of Christians in Thessalonica 
is the way that we need to share our hearts with people in our lives. These four verses in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 show us a Christmas list, actually three lists that we can make for our family and friends. So let's take a look at them. First of all, to begin the process of experiencing a simple Christmas, make a list of the most important people in your life. Your wife, your husband, your children, your grandchildren, your parents, your brothers, sisters, your friends, and on and on. Sometime during this week, take the time to make a list of all of these people. And then, before the holiday is over, make a point to do two things. One, thank God for bringing these people into your life. And two, tell them how much they matter to you. Now, this is what Paul did. In verse 9, Paul says, How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of God because of you? Paul was grateful for his relationship to the believers in Thessalonica. And he expressed his gratitude to God and he expressed his appreciation to them. He took the time to say, Thank you. I appreciate you. You fill my life with joy. Now that seems like such a simple thing to do, but I would dare to say that most of us, many of us, don't say these simple things often enough. But keep in mind, there's no way for people to know how you feel about them unless you make an effort to tell them. There's an old joke about the woman who complained to her husband you never tell me you love me anymore. And he said, look, I told you I loved you when I married you 25 years ago. Until I take it back, it's still in effect. <laughs> now that kind of attitude may work for us, but it doesn't work for the people in our lives. If you want to establish a deeper connection with the people you love, make an effort to express your appreciation. Now, if you're an adult, chances are it's been a very long time since you've told your brothers or sisters or mom or dad how much you love and appreciate them. If you've been married for more than 10 years, chances are it's been a while since you said that to your spouse. So tell them now. This Christmas is a good time to make up for lost time. You don't have to be melodramatic about it. It doesn't have to be like a scene from Touched by an Angel. You only have to tell them how you feel in plain, simple language. In fact, you can use Paul's words. How can I ever thank God enough for all the joy you've brought into my life? So make a list of the people you love and make an effort to tell them. Secondly, make a list of intangible gifts that you can give to each one. Paul said, Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. He wanted to meet with his friends in Thessalonica and to build up their faith. He knew at that particular time that was what they needed the most. As you think about the people that you love, take some time to think about what you can give to each one. Something they really need. And I'm not talking about G.I. Joes or Nintendos or Playstations or pot holders or hand towels for the guest bathroom. I'm talking about something much more personal. Something non-material. Something intangible. There is something that you can give to each one on your list. A word of encouragement, a smile, a hug, a pep talk, an apology, a compliment. Ask yourself, what does this person need the most? What can I say to them? What can I do for them? How can I give them a lift? Now, I have a friend that saves up jokes for me. He knows I like to laugh, so every time I see him, he usually has gives me something to laugh about, and he nearly always begins by saying, 
when I heard this one, I thought of you. And to tell you the truth, I appreciate that part even more than the joke. There's a story about a missionary school teacher in Africa who was teaching her students about Christmas and how we give gifts to one another at Christmas time. A few days later, one of her students brought a gift, a beautiful, rare seashell. She asked him where he got it, and he said, I walked to the beach, and I picked it out for you. Now, the school was several miles from the ocean, so she knew that it had been a long walk for him. She said, you shouldn't have gone so far to get a gift from me. He said, the long walk was part of the gift. This year, in addition to the gifts that you buy for the people you love, make an effort to give each one something intangible, something that tells them how special they are to you. Thirdly, make a wish list for each one and share the list with them and with God. I use the term wish list because it is, after all, Christmas, what I really mean is a prayer list. This is what Paul did for the Thessalonians. He said, May the Lord make you your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Paul is saying, what I want for you, dear friends, is that you grow in love and strength and holiness. Think of the people on your list. What do you want for each one? Obviously, you want what is best for them. And just by telling them this, you will strengthen their hearts and encourage them. A young man tried out for a part in a theater production his mother knew the competition was intense for this part and that her son's chances of getting it were probably rather, rather slim. Every time he talked about the audition, she would temper his optimism with some motherly realism, saying something like, well, you know, there are a lot of people who want that part. Some of the people who auditioned have been in professional productions. Even if you don't get the part you want, being in the play will be a good experience, and on and on. And finally he said to her, Mom, can't you just say I hope you get the part? <laughs> there are few things as pleasing as hearing someone say they wish the very best for you. This holiday season, I encourage you to make it a point to tell each one of the people on your list what your prayer for them is. And be sure to say it in the most uplifting way possible. For example, don't say, my prayer for you is that you stop being a lazy bum. <laughs> There's a better way to phrase it, such as, my prayer for you is that you discover God's mission for your life. The greatest gift that you can give to anyone is to pray for them, and for a number of reasons. One obvious reason is prayer works. God answers prayers. When you pray for someone, God begins to move in that person's life. Another reason is that people find strength in knowing that others are praying for them. Perhaps you've heard people say, I could feel people praying for you, for, for, for them. And, and maybe you've been in that experience yourself where you know that's not just something that people say. You really can feel the strength when people are praying for you. If you'll take the time to pray for the people in your life, two things will happen. One, you'll strengthen that person. And two, you'll strengthen your relationship to that person. So look at the list of the people God has placed in your life, the people you love the most, the people who bring you the most joy. They will be an integral part of your Christmas this year. How you relate to them will determine what kind of Christmas you have. 
If you want to have a great Christmas, if you want to go beyond the holiday hype and experience the joy of a simple Christmas, then make an effort to connect on a deeper level with the people that you love. Take the opportunity this Christmas season to tell them what they mean to you and give thanks to God for them. In addition to toys and trinkets, make the effort to give them something intangible and meaningful. And most of all, create a prayer list, especially for them, and share it with them, and share it with God. One of the greatest gifts God has given to us is the gift of each other. Our family, our friends, our church family. Let's enjoy these gifts and let's celebrate Christmas together as we strive to observe a simple Christmas this year. Amen? Amen. It is so appropriate on this first Sunday in Advent to join together in sharing Holy Communion because communion points us to the cross and that's why Jesus came. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in a cattle trough in lowly estate because he came to go to the cross for you, for me, and for the whole world. And to take upon himself your sins and mine, the sins of the whole world, and to fully pay for them, to die, and to be raised again, we celebrate in Advent Jesus' is coming. And we look forward in Advent to His coming again. We don't know when that will be, but we're in an in-between time. The kingdom of God is among you, Jesus said. The kingdom of God is here, but it's not fully here yet. And so in this in-between time, in this time of making ready, this time of when we focus on the coming of Christ. It's a time to draw near to family and friends. And it's a time to draw near to the God who loves us so that he would give his only son for us. The story is a familiar one. On the night that Jesus was to offer himself up for us, he met in the upper room with his disciples. And there he took a loaf of bread and he asked God to bless it. And then he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took a cup and he asked God to bless it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Almighty God, in remembrance of all your mighty acts in Jesus Christ and in gratitude for sending him at all, for sending him as that tiny helpless baby born in Bethlehem to bear the sins of the world to die on the cross to be raised in victory we give you thanks send the power of your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here in this place and upon these your gifts to us make us be the body of Christ redeemed by your blood and make us one in love one in ministry and service to all your world until Christ comes again and we feast with him at the heavenly banquet. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. The body and blood of Christ given for me.
those that are assisting to please come forward. And as they do, I'll share with you that we'll be receiving communion by the method of intention. And what that means is a server will break a piece of bread off, give that to you. You take the bread and dip it in the cup and receive both elements in that manner. In the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion. It's just what it sounds like. It's open. <laughs> it's for everyone. Children, youth, adults, everyone. You don't have to be a United Methodist. You don't have to be a member of this church. All are welcome to come and to partake. given for you body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you body of Christ given for you the blood of Christ shed 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 for you Let's all stand together and join together in song. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. 
time of fellowship in the fellowship hall. There's some donuts and some beverages in there and uh, an opportunity for fellowship. And I hope you'll be sure to come back next Sunday as we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. The message next week is how to beat the holiday blues. And we'll be taken from Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. I hope you'll be here for that. And now let's receive this blessing. May the God of mercy keep you, the Holy Spirit cheer you, and Christ in glory greet you, now and at the day of his coming. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful Nothing can stand against What a power